You are listening to a free version of the Majority Report with Sam Steeter. To support the show and get another 15 minutes of daily program, go to majority.fm, please. The Majority Report with Sam Steeter. It is Tuesday. June 22nd, 2021. My name is Sam Cedar. This is the five-time award-winning Majority Report. We are broadcasting live steps from the industrially ravaged Gowanus Canal in the heartland of America, downtown Brooklyn, USA. On the program today, Professor of Economics and the Samuel Du Bois Cook Distinguished Professor of Public Policy at Duke University. Author of From Here to Equality, Reparations for Black Americans in the 21st Century, William Sandy Darity will be joining us. Also on the program today, Senate to vote on the Doomed for the People's Act. And speaking of doomed, <clears throat> Kirsten Cinema promotes a lame excuse to protect the filibuster. New York City has its mayoral and other primaries today. Don't expect a mayoral result for maybe a week or two. Also on the program, Joe Biden administration signals support for a bill to end the crack and powdered cocaine Sentencing disparity. Trump judge uh, judge dismisses the Lafayette Square police brutality case. And the Delta variant is growing in U.S. counties that have a lower vaccination rate. The famed Senate bipartisan infrastructure bill is about to be revealed. And A, it's going to stink. And B, don't hold your breath for them voting on it. Speaking of failure, the G7 fails to provide climate relief for poorer countries. And Medicaid enrollment surpassed 80 million Americans during the pandemic. All this and more. On today's Majority Report. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, joining me as always, Emma Vigeland. Hello, Emma. How are you? I am well today. How are you? Well, I'm doing great. Um, maybe we should explain as to why uh, you said that with a rising intonation to your voice that was slightly higher than normal. I yes. mean, you. But before we, we do, we should say. Hello to Steven Crowder. Hello to his team. Hello to everybody. Appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much for tuning into the show. Uh, before we get there, actually, I just wanted to mention one one thing about this last uh, headline. So uh, <clears throat> 10 million more people got on Medicaid over the course of the pandemic. Um, somewhat in part because I think there was one or two states that uh, expanded the, their Medicaid offerings uh, over the course of the past year um, by referendum, I think. Remember, there were about 10 or 12 red state holdouts that would not accept an expansion of Medicaid for their citizens because of some form of uh, sociopathy, I guess, Mm -hmm. or sociopathy. Sociopathy. Yes, something to that effect. Sociopathy. Anyways, uh, but if you add up the number of people who are on Medicaid at this point and the number of people who are on Medicare— Medicaid being uh, for people living uh, under 400, uh, excuse me, 130 percent of uh, poverty, like I say, in most states. And the 61 million people who are on uh, Medicare, you get something like 35 uh, million, 40 million on uh, just uh, standard Medicare and then uh, another 20 million on Medicare Advantage. You're talking about half of the country already on government-run insurance. 
So the idea of presenting a single payer system in this country as being some form of like radical, just in, insane government takeover of a major sector of the economy um, is, is only half true. It would be just an expansion of the government's takeover of a major sector of the economy. I mean, that's basically what it is. They have over half uh, or about half of the United States population. And let's be clear, if you look at the data, people tend, tend to have more medical issues when they are living in poverty because they are the they are living in areas where they're more likely to get asthma because of the way our system works and uh there may be more coal fire power plants in their neighborhoods um etc they have less facilities they may have more opportunity to uh be in substandard housing they may uh, have nutrition issues or when people are older that's just the, the the reality of it so we have more than likely the most expensive cohort, almost half of the country, already in government-run health insurance. So the idea that to do a single-payer program for the entire country would be anything other than just simply adding efficiency um, is absurd. But uh, that's where we're at. We can't even pass a bill that would protect people's right to vote right now in the Senate. And Kristen Sinema is out there talking about how the filibuster is protecting Democrats from passing legislation that would be then easy for Republicans to reverse in the future. Let's just be clear. When we talk about Democrats, when we talk about Republicans, and uh, I think there are more than legitimate complaints about having a, a such a narrow duopoly in if I were king for a day. I would set up a parliamentary system in this country, and that's the way we'd be running things. But we have two parties. And so when people vote for one or the other, they are voting to empower one of those two groups to pass legislation. And the idea that that legislation could be overturned if, if voters decide to empower a different party is what is known as democracy. And so the idea that, and, and frankly, look, we saw the Republicans could not muster the votes to re- reverse the ACA. So let these legislate, let these laws stand or fall on their own accord. If they are successful, then uh, well, the oper- opposing party won't be able to overturn it. Yeah, I mean, don't operate out of a place of fear, but that's, again, uh, giving cinema and mansion credit fear. that they don't even... Do- well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, that the, the, they are using uh, the idea that, oh, this would be potentially used against us as a cover for actually we enjoy the filibuster because it allows us to wield maximum power in this narrow system that we operate in. And uh, we also don't necessarily want to pass progressive legislation because the people that fund our campaigns are not in favor of such. And then they run interference for the Mark Warners of the world, the John Testers, the Angus Kings, whoever the case may be, who want to be uh, in that same cohort but aren't going to be saying it publicly. So, I mean, good for them. They're, they're shielding their similarly corrupted and conservative I- Democrats. Um I got to imagine. For a team. I got to imagine if Cinema and Mansion sign on to any type of reform for the filibuster, everybody else is going to be there. All right, look, yes. I want to address one more thing too, because um, uh, we got to get to uh, Professor Darity. Um, but um, I don't know how many people still read Newsweek, uh, but if you do, you probably uh, saw this headline this morning. Um, we mentioned this on. Uh, this uh, Sam Cedar ambushes Stephen Crowder on YouTube show Sparks Meltdown. That is, uh, you know, fairly accurate uh, assessment on some level of what went on. Um, people should know uh, there there are a lot of people who just watch the first hour of the show. That's the uh, free part of the show. Uh, although we do uh, uh, clip stuff and put it on YouTube, and um, we we do two basically two different shows. The the first half of the show we have uh, guests like. Um, um, Professor Darity, 
an esteemed professor, written a a very um, uh, important book. Uh, We have people on to talk about uh, different policies. We talk about uh, different moments in our history, Reconstruction, the Great Compression, uh, whatever um, um, uh, whole range of, of, of more highfalutin topics. And then uh, we have a second half of the show that gets a little bit more, um, you know, messy, as it were. Right. Yeah. Sometimes we also will will talk about, um, you know, uh, important issues, obviously, and, and, and we'll go into it. And sometimes we monologue and sometimes we, um, you know, we try and expose uh, right wingers for their maybe their homophobia or maybe their uh, racism or maybe they're just misguided uh, libertarian principles or, you know, we, we do this. Rather, but. Cowardice. Yeah, or, and, cowardice and, or, you know, and then it turns out to be cowardice. For a lot of people don't understand that much of what's happening in politics, certainly over the past five or six years, have emanated out of the, the far reaches of uh, YouTube and what they say, you know, social media and whatnot. And so we engage. And uh, yesterday um, we pre-recorded the first half of the show because um, a guy named Ethan Klein, who has a massive YouTube show. I don't know. They have uh, six million uh, subscribers uh, every uh, three million. Every uh, show he does gets like, uh, I don't know, a million views. Um, And uh, he got challenged uh, to a debate by uh, Stephen Crowder, long story short. And Ethan is not a uh, political uh, YouTuber. And they invited me on to, uh, uh, you know, basically discuss the issue with Stephen Crowder. And, um, well, Stephen's reaction was really sad. Uh, He... And we'll certainly get into that more yeah. thoroughly in the later, yes. uh, in that part of the program. But the, the reason I said hello to Stephen and hello again at the start of the show is because um, he pretends not to know who Sam is, but he seems to be monitoring the show quite, and There's quite reason to believe, and we're going to play, what we're going to do in the uh, second hour is we're going to play the entire exchange, and we will uh, give a play-by-play. As to what's going on, yes. uh, because some of it is uh, hard to understand because the Crowder people got completely freaked out. Yes, um, very triggered, they, one might say. In fact, I got a, an IM from a friend. He's a TV executive. And uh, he said, uh, the, the closest I can say that, to explain what I saw was as if a lion walked into a den of uh, chimpanzees and they just went crazy because uh, they were afraid. Um, and we'll let Very you decide. Very lionizing to describe yourself as the lion. I did not describe myself that but way. But it is this accurate, yes. TV executive did. Yeah. Um, I don't perceive it's myself that I came uh, in a very gentle way. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll be talking to Professor Sandy Darity on his uh, book, and, and, and really about reparations, but uh, his book is From Here to Equality, Reparations for Black Americans in the 21st Century. Folks, uh, just a reminder... We are not uh, primarily a YouTube show, or I should say that we don't perceive ourselves that way. Um, and uh, that is not the, the, the key source of our revenue. We, it's our members, and you can become a member at jointhemajorityreport.com. Um, and also uh, sponsors, which you know, happen here to there, but one sponsor has been with this show since the very beginning, the literally the beginning. In fact, even before the beginning, back when Mark Marin and I did Break Room Live at Air America, they are movement sponsors. They have been in supportive of the show in ways that you couldn't even possibly imagine. Uh, and that has to do with the Cernovich thing, and we'll talk about that at a different time. But they are celebrating, uh, it just happens this week, they are celebrating their uh, relationship with this show, and I am celebrating it. They are giving 25% off any of their coffee. At justcoffee.coop, fair trade coffee, tea, or chocolate. Use the code MR25. Don't use majority for this one week. MR25. From yesterday until June 27th, you will get 25% off. Get a five pound bag. You can get the majority report blend. You can get the Mark Marin WTF blend if you have to. But there's all, all sorts of great coffees. Now is the time. Try a bunch of them. Uh, because they're all fantastic. They are a co-op. They're employee-owned. They are really, really uh, great with what they do with their producers in Central America. They never abandon them, regardless of what's happening. Climate change has been difficult for a lot of those uh, places, and they're fantastic. So check them out. I think I'm going to get that cold brew blend. Uh, You you should, believe me. Um, And then uh, today's sponsor, also Quip. 
You've heard me talk about how much I love their toothbrushes, how much I love their refillable flossers, their gum. The gum is great, but the dispenser is even better, I got to say. There are- 